listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Saturday Night Live After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's SNL After Show. That's right, everybody. Sweet, sweet Saturday Night Live music. Sweet, <laughs> sweet, sweet. sweet. For season 39, episode 18, host Anna Kendrick and musical guest birthday boy Pharrell Williams. Woo! 41 years old. <laughs> what? Yeah. And Anna is 28. For, wait, Pharrell is 41 years old? That's what it says online. Oh, What my. do you think he does to stay April so young April 5th, looking? 1973. Maybe he uses Clinique moisturizers. Uh. Black don't crack. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Marissa's in the booth. That's what I hear. That's what I hear, Marissa. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, <Not> welcome. <laughs> welcome to a new episode, and I'm super excited to get into it. I'm your host, Roy Tahari, and joining with me is the full panel, Yay! Keaton Markey. Hi, y'all. Good to be back. And Danny Hoyt. Hi, I'm Danny Hoyt, and it's good to be back. Now, are you happy? I'm happy. Because Cause... I'm happy I belong with you. I'm not that happy, but I'm happy. Yeah, so what was your guys' take on this, like, real quick recap? What did you, yes, uh, no? Go. Go. Um, I, uh, uh. <laughs> It was okay. Uh-huh. It was okay for me. Okay, like I appreciate that Anna Kendrick let her Disney and musical fangirl just fly because that's what I would do if I ever got to host SNL. Um, and I'm glad they kind of like they let her have fun with it and they let her kind of all of, like probably her fantasies come true. I can true. feel a big butt coming. Um, but I didn't think they hit a they hit. I felt like they could have done so much more with what they had. I don't know. It just. Oof. It wasn't. Oof. It wasn't my favorite, Oof. but it wasn't bad. I would give the entire. Well, I okay. can't get my well, grade yet. Well, you weren't here last week for Louis C.K. No, you, I was not. What comparison it was of the two? Better than Louis. Okay, that's all I want to hear. That's all, Danny. But I think it was just more my style. Yeah. yeah, this was just really average for me. Really? Yes. <laughs> I oh, thought the way you said it. that was like this, this was, was just, just really, really average for me. Like, uh, <laughs> it was just yeah, like average. I would agree with you. It was average. I was frustrated. I wanted more. I don't think you guys are gonna like me. You, you loved it. I loved it. I could have either been watching it super late and it was super just delirious and everything was funny. To we me. never, we never um, agreed though. Mm-mm. No, that's true. But so, that's good. That works out. To be out. expected. The day that we actually both have the same like thoughts on an episode, I will be worried that, the, that the big one was going to hit. That what means it's probably like, not, not good at all. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> we were cracked out or something. I, I would know. be very concerned. <laughs> like, oh, something bad's going to happen. I just got to say, there's a line from the opening that says, it's going to be a real good show, funny and an awesome show, a magical, exciting show tonight. And I have to agree with that statement. And I agree with it. Wait, where was that? Who said that? Was that was in the opening monologue opening about monologue. Yeah. and the singing. Yeah. So I have to agree with that. I did love how much Kate McKinnon I got this episode. Mm-hmm. True. I love her. All right, so let's <laughs> jump right into it then. The cold open, the con- uh, the hearing for the General Motors ignition switch recall uh, with Kate McKinnon as Mary Barra and yeah. the chairman as Taryn. <laughs> Cecily, I didn't catch her character's name, but she was from Denver. It's what I'm pretty it was sure. It's like it's... Dr- Dr-Jet or Bridget. Bridget. Yeah. Dr-Jet. And then we have Mike O'Brien, who I like to call Tim. Uh, <laughs> hashtag, he should just change his name to Tim, make it a lot easier for me. Uh, or I could learn it. But Mike O'Brien was um, Mr. Upton from Michigan. And Bobby's back playing Bobby. Joe Barton. Bobby was all over this episode. He Bobby was. was. He ha- he's been kind of gone for a while. Not yeah. gone, he was just... I know, not gone, but he's just been like the guy sitting in the booth in the back corner of the sketch. Well, we didn't really <laughs> see him last all we week. Really see. <laughs> He was gone last week for Louis. We didn't really see him that much. We saw him, I think, one time when he had his belly showing as that really weird moment when he was, um, Louis's character was saying that he loved his girlfriend, but he was saying in the most weirdest fashion. Mm. You guys remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just didn't thought. like my statement, did you? No. <laughs> my English, no good. <laughs> um, no, that's not it at all. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so let's discuss the cold open. What did you guys think? 
I mean, I had no idea what's going on with this General Motors things, but I still they they did kind of allow some of the jokes to to be accept to be accepted by people who don't really know what's going mm-hmm. on in in the news, um, and I appreciated that. Uh, I giggled a couple times and I was just like, oh, I'm learning something new. That's one of the reasons I really love SNL because I feel like, like, I get, want, I get my news yeah. fix. <laughs> I mean, I watch like the Colbert Report and Jon Stewart and stuff like that. But um, yeah, SNL, I, I, I don't watch a CNN as much as I used to. So SNL gives me my recap for the week. <laughs> That's so sad. Between the cold open and weekend update, you get all your like public. I got it. I got it. I don't need to <laughs> do anything else. Screw the view. It was average. <laughs> My favorite part of the sketch was when Taryn cuts her off. Oh no, that was that made it a great sketch. I thought. Yeah, but it was, it was okay. Had they ever done that before? I don't I think they've the ever. Yeah, I don't think they've ever done that before, where somebody is mm. about to say live from New York mm-hmm. and they completely no, cut her off. No, no, no. <laughs> we're not done here. No, no, no. You can't say that. Avoid the question. <laughs> But I love when they do that setup where they have the one person looking at them. Well, I don't know. It's not probably set up that way. But one person's looking at them, and then they um, have the panel mm-hmm. talking back to them. Yeah. Like they did it for the debates and stuff where they interact in that way, and I like that mm-hmm. style. Uh, I really like this one. I really enjoyed it. I loved all the lines. Kate McKinnon was amazing in it. The new GM starting now. No. <laughs> it just stayed a little, like, level for me. I yeah. that's why I didn't like. Like I wanted, I wanted something more. Like the joke just kind of stayed level. I mean, they played their parts great, and Kate McKinnon. It was funny. Like you just got the gist of what she was trying to do right away, and I needed, I needed more for me to be excited. You're greedy. About it. Was just I? Kidding. Yeah. I just think well, in a cold open, like you wanted to be so, like you wanted to be like. You really wanted to grab people. It was weird for me that that it, this topic was at the cold open. Because I don't, I don't know. It just like, well, it's a C-SPAN. They well, usually do yeah. C-SPAN. Here's my thing. You have a lot of stuff going on in the news, and there's something you could obviously make fun of. And maybe they're not. They're shying away from making fun of the plane for some but odd you reason. You can't make yeah. fun of the plane. It's not too the plane, soon. But you can make too you can soon. Make fun of the fact that it's, they're still searching, or you know what I mean? Like some aspect, of, like bring light to it in some way, like. Like, make, maybe not the plane, I think but this like. This is where we need to cue the disclaimer. No! For yeah. After Buzz. No, because what I'm saying, not make fun of the plane. What I'm saying is, like, make light of, like, something like it. Like, they're searching for something and they can't find it. And they just can't find it. And it's, Turn into it a says, boss. like, one week later. And they're still looking for it. And one week later. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. do something that's just more topical. I'm going to have to disagree. Really? I really enjoyed the incentive? cold open. I mean, what you said was slightly insensitive, but I don't really. But I kind of agree with. I wish they would have done a different topic. Of yeah, not like I don't mean to make light. Of, I'm not just to clarify. I'm not making light of the plane situation. The fact they can't find. I just mean something that's like a little more relative. Is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. No, I could, I could see that. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I, I really enjoyed this. It made me really happy. I know it's a stupid song to go into, Happy. but made me really enjoy the, get me excited for the entire opening. Yeah, what you, would sketch. you grade it? I gave it an A. Oof. You love giving Brr. out A's. I, if it makes I'd me, give it a C plus. Kate McKenna was great. She Same. Yeah, but you can't just throw in a great. Sure like, I can. <laughs> I just sure did. I can. I do what I want. <laughs> what did you guys give it though? C plus. C plus. Wow. C plus. C plus. <laughs> Literally, when this sketch was going on, I, I turned to my boyfriend and I go, I bet you any amount of money Anna Kendrick is going to find every single time chance to sing during this episode that she can. <sighs> and that is oh. what happened. <laughs> okay, well, opening monologue of Anna Kendrick, I didn't know she had a musical theater background. Have you not seen Pitch Perfect? I have, but so? Nicole Kidman can sing. And she did Moulin Rouge, so I didn't assume Anna that Kendrick she... started on Broadway. Oh, I don't yeah. know Anna Kendrick. She won a Tony. I just know she came from Twilight. <laughs> and then she branched off into being Oscar nominated and apparently Tony nominated. Oh, speaking of, hi Marissa. Hi guys. Marissa's in the booth, you guys. <laughs> Marissa controls the air conditioning. We love her for having the air conditioning on. Danny's melting next to me. <laughs> it all of a sudden decided to be summer in California today. <laughs> yeah, whatever, it happens. Yeah, I like it. But I really enjoyed the opening monologue with beating the beast, bringing it back. The whole time I was like, oh, I know this song, I know this song. And then it dawned on me what it was. During the- and the Lauren Michaels sighting, that made me excited. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's always fun to see. And it was kind of funny how she grinded up on him. I yeah, was and like, he walks away and she kind of like She fell. kind of like, yeah, Lord. <laughs> well, I got a question for you guys then. There's a part where she goes up to him and then the audience kind of starts laughing. Now, I rewind, like, rewound it to see if it was relation between her and Lauren. Or if it was something that happened on the stage, because you see the whole crew on the stage while Lauren is watching it. 
So I don't. The only thing I saw was when Kate McKinnon was kind of like pulling down her dress. Maybe something came up uh, when she was going to the stage, or maybe it was actually that line. I was mean, supposed to be funny. I feel like it, it might have just been the fact that Lauren might. They probably just turned the lights or put the lights up, and they re, the audience realized Lauren Michaels was there. I don't know. I didn't notice that. I didn't. I was just giggling along because that is like one of my favorite. I love the Beauty and the Beast musical. Mm -hmm. I love the the, the movie, mm -hmm. and that is one of my favorite Disney songs. Because as a girl, it's just so much to sing. And like, if you play that <laughs> while you're like walking down the street, you're just like <laughs> <laughs> have your own little musical. <laughs> you have your own little musical in your head, and it's glorious. I so. want to see you do that in LA. That'd be great. Go downtown <laughs> and just start doing that. That'd be awesome. There is a hilarious YouTube video of the, a spoof of that song where a woman is in like like goes in like an in inner city and is singing kind of a uh, just a, a funny parody version of that song and she's just like this like little white girl being like hi hi and she's like on like what it's so funny really? I wish I could figure out I wish I could remember what it's called maybe one of you guys could look it up but um, it's like yeah she's like like bells walking through the ghetto basically it's hilarious hmm. I just want to say something real quick Please say I it. wasn't the only one that didn't know Anna Kendrick was on Broadway Joseph Boza on our chat roll watching us live right now hi Joseph hi, agree Joseph. said the same hi, thing hi Joseph so <laughs> I'm not alone. Well, Anyways. now you. <laughs> I well, don't know why I had an evil laugh, but I wanted to do an you evil learn laugh. Learn something new every but day. I gotta say, with the opening monologue, that compared to Louis before and how it was kind of like meh. You know how I told you last week I wanted more. I wanted something that's not what I'm used to seeing. Mm -hmm. um, even though it was great, it's just not something I'm used to seeing as an SNL. Uh, this is opening. what you wanted, like a number. This yeah. is that's what I wrote. Now that's how you open an SNL show. Loved her dress. Loved her voice. Loved all of it. That's dress what was I wrote. adorable. Which I found out by US Weekly that that dress is actually $698 that you can get at Madison Avenue Collection. Dang. Well, so it's still available, apparently. If I only had $600 yep. to spare. It's by Kate Spade. Thank you, Kate Spade. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fun mm -hmm. fact, guys. Fun fact. So <laughs> you obviously know my grade on that. What is your guys' grade? I actually gave it an A. I yes. like seeing everybody in. They sang well. There was some topical humor. I loved, uh, what did she say to Bobby? She, oh, he told her to like, calm to pace oh, yeah. yourself. Yeah. So, Cause she was like obviously like playing yeah. like the overexcited card and he was like, okay, pace yourself. Yeah. Uh, I laughed there and then I loved A.D. Bryant's wig and the fact that the wig was actually was a wig. Yeah. wig. Was it Ursula's wig? Um, there was a lot of things I really enjoyed about it and it ended with the whole cast singing. They actually sounded pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you expect them to, but they sounded better than I would have expected it to. Like, there were some harmonies in there that mm -hmm. were very yeah, good. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, and then, <laughs> at the end, I can't remember what the exact words are, but the guys were chanting something else. Uh, it was like Kyle Mooney and Brooks Whelan. It was the back left, if we're looking at it. They were chanting something while everybody was doing their finishing note. It was just really, mm. it was a full, like you said, it was like a full number, and I Bonjour. enjoyed it. Bonjour. Bonjour. I give it Bonjour. a name. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Kate McKinnon. Yeah, well, Kate McKinnon just yeah. walks away. Hi, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave it an A. Minus. Sweet. So we all agree. <laughs> Writing was perfect then for it. I ignored the minus part. It was I, I, yes. I enjoyed it, and I would and I would want to do something very similar if I ever had the chance to. Sweet. Oh, so that's awesome. All right, so then let's go on to our next sketch, yeah. Fox and Friends. Now, this is interesting because I'm pretty sure they don't usually only do this in the cold opens, right? Or we've only seen it in the cold but open. Just political related stuff. The Fox and Friends with Fox those three guys. <laughs> there are three people. Oh, uh, usually that's where we see. It. That's placement I think maybe of it, right? Usually, but I, I don't think it's out of the realm of normal to do something. Uh, maybe I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Yeah, Anna Kendrick yeah. plays a great middle-aged Southern woman. She was I great. I was like, what? Tell me <laughs> if you guys noticed this. She, did she or did she not look like a young Tina Fey in that when she was reporting from her house? She looked like a young Tina Fey to me. Like a 30-year-old Tina Fey. You just yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to say yes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, I, I, I don't didn't really know. catch that. But oh, well, all right. I can see, yeah. I can see in her kind of mannerisms how she, she, she has a little Tina Fey in her, definitely. I think especially in her com comic timing and the way she hits jokes. But No, I just mean physically how she looks. No. <laughs> no? Mm. Okay. Not with the blonde wig. I don't have an answer. I don't. I refuse. I don't have can I roll away? Roll, roll away. away. <laughs> this is not. No, are you, are you trying to roll away? Where you can. <laughs> it's slanted. <laughs> um, so, this sketch I enjoyed. I don't think, I, I I think all three of those guys like do very like they're funny, 
together, but I don't think their impressions are good. I think somebody else should be doing Elizabeth Hasselbeck. I don't think it should be Vanessa Bayer. But who would they have? Kate McKinnon. I know she does everything else for the mind. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't, like, I just don't believe that she's... Well, didn't Kristen or, or Wiig play... Even if they did Noel. Noel yeah, Wells, Noel Noel Wells, Wells could, could, do do, could do an even good, uh, good Elizabeth Hasselbeck, but I don't think... I don't think Vanessa does a very good. But think about it, they have the three She's funny. key players though playing those characters. The key, actually, the whole sketch was only their main, main players, huh? Yeah. Because Keenan came in out later, as a uh, Cosmos, Neil deGrasse. <laughs> Neil deGrasse. Tyson. I love that yeah. show. It's a uh, great show. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy. I, I'm trying to figure out the whole Hasselbeck thing. Uh, could be better. It, it just went on a little long for me with the same joke. I mean, it was funny at times. Um, I think, and I, this was in one of the reviews I read, they switched, uh, they just, it was just, like, they switched. If it would have just, just been Neil deGrasse Tyson or just Anna Kendrick, but they mm. changed the pace too fast, and the subjects they were talking about. The funniest part, again, was at the end with the scrolling credits, yeah. which were amazing. Yeah. Did you guys read we, all of them? I, yeah, yep. we were pausing them and reading them all, and they're hysterical. <laughs> I didn't read all of them. I was trying to find a list of them um, so I could read through all of them. I, I got Garfunkel is not Garfield's black cousin. Don Cheadle does not appear if you say Cheadle Juice three times. Game of Thrones it's is not, not the adult, adult version of musical <laughs> chairs. <laughs> I think there's one that says God God hates figs in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, God loves figs. He loves figs. Mm -hmm. yeah, and no is stuff. not found footage. Yeah, no, that was Captain America was never a U.S. president. <laughs> Their periodic table is not about lady stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then Malaysia is not the female version of Asia. And there's something, oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson does own a sandwich shop called Quizmos. That's what I said. Oh. Yeah. Fun fact, I guess. There we go. I gave it a B minus. <laughs> I, okay, I gave it an A because of all the line, one-liners that they had in it and because Anna Kendrick did a great job in it. I she stayed in character the entire time. B minus. Okay. Really? Okay. Did I encourage it at all? I, it was going to be a C, C plus, but okay. you guys, uh, guys talked <laughs> me into a B minus. I didn't. I didn't really like this game. Dongs all over the world. Da, 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 dong, we gotta da, catch da, them da, like da. sexual Pokemon. <laughs> That's not how they said it, but I want to say it that way. That was the best line. Yeah. <laughs> I love. Okay. Dong. I love dongs. No. <laughs> I. I. Well. No. I really. The song was really catchy. I was very. There's. There's too many dongs all over my screen. Um. But I love when all those the girls. I think. The, the females of SNL right now are just so good. And I love that they're letting them shine and letting them do their own things. And they're kind of becoming like the new Lonely Island. Mm -hmm. They're coming out with all the song bits. And they're all good singers and they're all hilarious. And I, I just love them all. I didn't particularly like the sketch. The song is catchy. I just don't like the word dong, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's probably like the least offensive form of that part of the body. They were trying to use the least offensive word. Penis? Yeah, <laughs> that they could use. That would be catchy. Here's my, here's my thing. This is, I have to be honest, this is what I was most, maybe most looking forward to, was the big musical digital short they were going to do with Anna Kendrick. Because I figured it'd be something with all the girls, maybe the guys too, but like, that's what I was really looking forward to. Because they had a chance to do something stellar. And I felt like this fell short. I, I would agree with that. I didn't think they it was as funny as it could have been. I really, really, really enjoyed it, but it could have been better. Yeah, and it, it, like, it was almost like they tried to do, you know, they mentioned like the hoes in different area codes. It almost had a little bit of beat of that new Talk Dirty song by Jason Derulo, like that Talk Dirty to me. Like it just, it just didn't, it didn't feel like they had like a creative, exact creative direction on where to go. So they just went with what worked for the moment and it just fell flat for me. I really liked it. Of course you did. <laughs> I just, I like the beat. It reminded me of the twins, uh, twin mattress thing. Twins. I you that know? yeah, that which is like probably the best digital short they've done. Mm -hmm. But my quick question for you guys is: uh, Doing on my twin bed. Yeah, yeah, doing on my twin bed. Nasim is not in this now because she's technically one of the main cast members for females. Do you think maybe Sashir is kind of replacing her, and that way she can be moved out? I mean, Would Nassim, you be upset if that happened? I don't know. Nassim has been put in the back like round a lot. Like I have not seen her. Mm -hmm. I mean, barely I've seen her. The only the last character I can actually remember her doing. I mean, besides uh, Kanye or Kim Kardashian, is maybe when the Drake episode when she was like the the 
little girl that gets brought up at the oh. zoo. But I can't remember her being a big part of any other sketch. We for, miss you, yeah. Nassim. For we miss you. episode, definitely. There was only, she was a background person. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do wonder if they're trying to fade her out. Or, or maybe she's trying to fade herself out? No. No? Not gonna fade her. Why would you fade yourself if out? If you got something else going on and yeah, you're not she getting might roles? Have some pilots or. Can I tell you guys what I rated this sketch? <laughs> Can you guess? A D. A D for dongs? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I would rate this sketch a B. I gave it B an for A. What? Boner. <laughs> <laughs> and you give it an A for Awesome. Aka awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um and then before we move on to the next sketch, I just wanted to ask you guys, did you notice Cecily is in a Jeep commercial? I did, and they love Good to play it during the commercials of SNL. Yeah, yeah. that well, yeah. She's that's making bang. Jeep spot. Yeah, so I wonder if she's driving a little Jeep around. Beep, mm. beep. Uh, I doubt they're driving anything because they live in New I know, York. Whatever. But. She could have one if she wanted one. Don't ruin her dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so a little her. Little Mermaid is the next one. <laughs> I uh, enjoyed it. I like this one. I felt like they. Uh, it just fell short, like a little short for me. It right. was almost there, but I just, it, the pacing was off. Who was the star of the sketch for you? Could, it should have been. A. Yeah, exactly. And that's the only reason I didn't give it an A. I gave it a B. Because Actually, I Actually, if we're going to be honest, the eels in the background. No. I wanted Anna Kendrick to just, like, steal this. Well, let's say this. Her impressions were good, though. Like, her... Yeah. Anna Kendrick. Oh, yeah, no, she's been great this entire... No, so- her musical impressions in this specific catch oh, were great. Yeah. Her Kesha voice? Yes. Womanize, womanize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that alone was good. I mean, and then the 80s line kind of, like, is part of how she stole, like, let's be honest, if you're going to do Britney, everybody knows you should do yeah. Toxic. That was not a voice. That's a baby having That's sex. That's a baby having sex. <laughs> Best line of the sketch. And then I loved Anna's rebuttal. She's like, um, you're kind of being a bitch. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> oh, no, I take it back. Best moment of the sketch was when she said, it's okay, it's Iggy Azalea, and she's white. She's like, oh, so you're a racist. <laughs> yeah, I love the dark turn that they made Ariel, or the whole Little Mermaid sketch. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I really enjoyed this. I didn't understand why it finished with... Jay Farrow singing an old song from like seven years ago. He's that Jamaican. Yeah. But no, it was a little weird of an ending. Yeah, it was just a weird ending. Like it almost felt like we didn't, how she, do we put a bow on this? So let's just do Jay Farrow with the crab singing. You guys confuse me. I Sean have to Kingston. say, you guys confuse me. Really? You guys, in previous podcasts, and I'm not trying to like throw you under the bus or anything, you guys, and I'm part of it too, Jesus, that. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> that you say the sketches go on too long. But then when they try and make it short and sweet, you say you want more, and then it's not... No, I don't want more from this. I didn't want more from this I didn't either. want more from this. They didn't okay. need the song at the end. Yeah, I just... So just... then how would it have ended it? How would you end it? Because Maybe... Eric, they have to get a voice. That was the whole po- point of the whole sketch. Yeah, and I guess it voice. does incorporate the crab. It was kind of funny. I just didn't... I just. It was just a weird way to... I, did, I didn't like how it ended. I kind of was like, oh. I wish... <laughs> This is what I really wish. I wish they would have sang Timber and uh, oh. kind of have the Kesha impersonation with the uh, uh, Sean Paul. See? I mean, not Sean Paul. Um, Sean Kingston? Pip- no, Pitbull. 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 Yeah. Who kind of has that Caribbean twang, but. Yeah, he's got the Latin flavor. Yeah. I said that with an Irish accent. Yeah. The whole set. <laughs> the Latin flavor. The sketch, though, the whole set design was amazing. They had lighting yeah. that made Ursula or 80 look, look pink. Purple. Purple. I had pink, but... Pur- she was purple. Yeah. And whatever those <laughs> little things were in the background, yeah. they looked like bubbles. Yeah, I just... I think they actually were blowing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I think they really were bubbles. So yeah. overall, that whole sketch, with that the aspect of cool. everything, it was a great... It was well put together. It I wasn't half I loved Jay. I yeah. loved Jay. <laughs> Him and Bobby's just random yeah. reactions throughout it, just... just they made me happy. I'm a crab. I don't have ears. <laughs> I'm a crab. <laughs> and Bobby's face, like, I feel like they on purpose made that, like, face part a little too small. So it, like, pushed, like, made his cheeks puff out even more. Yeah. <laughs> it, made me so, it was so great. I wonder what, I wonder what fittings are like with them. Like, so Bobby, you're going to wear this giant gonna fish costume. going to squeeze your face into the front. How do you feel about that? Okay. okay uh, so what did you guys think? B. B? B plus. A. B for Britney Spears. A for awesome. Everything is know. awesome. <laughs> okay, so this next sketch is probably the... No. Best sketch of the night. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay, Danny, you take it away. You take it. 
Um, the awkward so, date asking, I guess, is what you could call it. I want to hear what you guys think first. Go ahead. Because I love this, obviously. I'm going to let you know from the top. I loved it. Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of forgettable for me. Really? Honestly. You didn't um, laugh when it turned? I mean, kind of, but like, I don't get those guys' humor. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but like, all the, the things that they do, I just am like, uh, yeah. I think I should be laughing at this, but I'm not. It should be funnier than it is. You didn't laugh when he pulls out his underwear and he's, I can poop on my No, underwear. that was funny. <laughs> She's like, I, I get poop on my underwear. Two poops in a pod? I mean, come on. <laughs> See? She's still laughing about it. What did you think? I enjoyed it. But it was forgettable. It. it didn't stay with me. I thought it was funny. I really liked it. I liked the whole, like, dirty and crude all at the same time type of thing. When, hey, don't um, you have sex right now? Yeah. <laughs> See, that dark I'm layer. I'm going to myself a boner. That dark right. layer added to <laughs> it without making you forget, like, uh, about what was really happening. Like, that was what I want. And yeah. That's what people wrote about it. It was like, it was, it was perfectly sweet. A dark layer added, but it wasn't too creepy. Like, that's... I hope everybody's okay. I just love that sketch. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I don't, yeah. Um, I liked it. It was, yeah. It yeah. was, uh, okay. I would give that a C plus. I gave it a B plus. Gave it an A, kids. Oh. An A for awesome. My first A of the night. Uh, that's your, you don't give A's out very easily. Mm, well, I did last week when you were gone. So, Danny, do you remember Sorry. last week how you had a prediction that Pharrell would not sing Happy First. I wasn't predicting. I just was hoping it wouldn't happen, but I was way out. Right. And who predicted that it would happen first? You. Wait, Two. what? Who? Give one more time. It's pretty obvious Let's that it would it. happen first. Too many children squeezed on the stage. Really? I thought that's uh, the only thing that made it okay for me. Too many just... They like obviously like if those kids would have tried to like move a little bit like the ones on the end would just get thrown. Okay, off. so let me be honest. That's the only thing that saved it for me was ha having all those kids on the stage, like having all the high school kids. Were they high school kids? Because Whatever they there were. was no. some college kids in the far left corner. Well, I some of those kids were. I think the kid. I thought they the were guy, like elementary. I'm not elementary. School, but like middle, like middle school. school. Yeah. The boy, the dance and like did the nay yeah. thing. Like he was definitely in Can high you school. Do the nay nay thing. Can I do the nay nay thing? I'm not in, not in these <laughs> pants. No, I cannot do the nay nay yet. Will you teach me? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids in the far left corner seemed a little bit too old, and it felt like it was like a, a mini, what's the baseball series called? Uh, little League Baseball. I wanted to get their birth certificates and see if they fit <laughs> properly. They just, they had facial hair, but they didn't have facial hair. It was very... I don't know. Maybe they're just growing too fast. I know that's not the point of this whole performance, and I I'm sorry. I am so you. sorry. I'm not a big fan of the song, but I liked this. I agree with Danny. I liked the kids. I wish they would have had less kids, and so that they all like they had less kids, so that they could be doing more cool moves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously, they're all talented. Um, but this song is so overplayed. I'm so over it. My, I wanted more break so dance breakdowns. Yeah, I want. I wanted one of the little girls to like, because yeah, I knew that one blonde girl was like looking at that guy like, oh, I, he's got nothing on me. <laughs> she, she never got to go up and dance with Pharrell. That's awesome. I felt bad for her. <laughs> I gotta say, I don't really listen to Pharrell, and uh, I listened to him when he was a nerd, or N E R D, if that's whatever. And his music has changed very different. It's different. Like, not as yeah. raunchy as now it used to be. happy! Yeah. It's like kids can actually listen to it, which is weird. Well, mainly because that song was actually written for a children's movie. But he also did blurred lines, everybody. Was it for a town that's cold because of a princess? <laughs> <laughs> Always cold? No? All right. Anyways, moving on. Weekend update. Too thank, long! No, thank mm. God they came back with a yes. good one this week. It was terrible last week. This was so much better for me. Yeah, I have to agree. I don't know. It was just weird that they like they like acted like it was over and then they came back. I love that. That was, was like, like okay for okay. This uh, this is a big. I'm glad you said it. This is a big moment for me because we needed to see some chemistry things between them because sometimes it's mm, almost like yeah. they're not even there together. They're yes. in two separate rooms. So yep. we needed to see and I that for me like reinvigorated like okay like that. That allowed them to add the second half of, or whatever was yeah. left. The whole bad more, memory part? Yeah. There was one goes, more guest after that. I'm Cecily Strong. Yeah. <laughs> like, just transitions back into it. Yeah. Here are tonight's top stories. That, yeah. was, that was so good, I think, for their chemistry and the future of them at the desk together. I agree. That definitely picked it up for yeah. me. 
And this was a good one. There's some there's some really good jokes I in the guests. I R. R. Mor- um, R. 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 Martin. Um, I threw a huge party last night for Game of Thrones. I'm a big Game of Thrones oh, thanks fan. thanks for inviting us. Did you go? No. Um, you I, guys did should you have know res- about it? You should have responded no. to my Facebook post that said who of my friends in L.A. are fans Anyways. of Game of Thrones. <laughs> you would have been invited. You love Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones, and I am I am very nervous that J.R. or whatever, George R. R. Martin is going to die soon before he finishes the stories. <laughs> so I like I think that was a funny thing to bring up. Because, yeah. yeah. They needed to do something with Game of Thrones because the, the tidal wave of publicity for Game of Thrones is getting so, it's gotten so big, obviously because it premiered, but like last night, but but it's been getting big and they hadn't really done a big thing for I it. wish they would have had somebody from Game of Thrones hosting. They probably could have done more. Yeah, like something Honor, more. They, they could have no. done more. They could have done a sketch. Because it's, it's arguably the biggest show with the biggest following right now. Yeah, I would agree. I, okay. I see where you're going with this. I agree. You're but just jealous you're not part of the Game of Thrones. That's fan. true. That's no. true. Sorry. Um, but Brooks Whelan, the PSA thing. Yes, Brooks, I, Brooks playing Brooks. Listen, that was great, but because it was a whole alcohol where I want a drunk uncle. I thought I drunk thought uncle was going to come back. I literally back. yelled, drunk uncle's about to yes. come out. But then mm. because of the whole author of Game of Thrones, it yeah. made sense to why he didn't. So in that sense, I would have preferred drunk uncle over the Game of Thrones. Okay, but so they I needed something with Game of Thrones. Because they could do Game of Thrones something. next week or the week after that. Or I mean, I guess they could still do. Drunk I have to Uncle. tell you guys this. I rewound and, wor- and watched the Brooks Whelan thing like three or four times because he started telling the story and he was like, Yeah, so I got drunk and passed out and guys put butter in my pants. And I was like, Where have I heard this story before? I was like, I, I've heard Has this that story. To you before? No, mm-hmm. I, when I, the first time I saw Brooks Whelan do live stand up, he told this. This is a real story that mm-hmm. happened to him. So whenever he's on Weekend Update, he's telling real stories. Like when right. he talked about his, his crappy tattoos that he has, and he's being from Iowa, that's really who Brooks Whelan is. Cause Brooks, remember, because Brooks Whelan can he, only play Brooks Whelan. He Whelan's can only man. play Brooks Whelan. <laughs> so, but the funny thing is, this is a legitimately, like, true, this really happened to him, real life story. And I saw him do it live. But it took me, I was like, God, where have I heard this story? Do I have a friend who? got butter put in his pants. Uh, Did you get butter put in your pants? <laughs> oh, guys. Uh, I, so I, I enjoyed that. And then anytime you get to see Kate McKinnon as Chancellor Angela yep. Merkel. She's the best. She is. So, and I, my favorite thing she did in this one was when she said some breast, some breast touches. She went like this every time. Not this. Not this. She went like this. Some, some breast, breast t- touches. Some breast touches. And she would go like this. I don't know why it was so funny to me, but it was so funny because she kept going so, so for some breast touches. <laughs> Stop looking at me and say that. <laughs> you want to go to make out the make out mountain for some breast? That's terrible. Um, I feel violated. <laughs> but she kept saying, what did she say about her pads? She said something about her pad, her, her shoulder, shoulder pads. Pad. And she wants to just let her Russian bowl cut blow in the breeze. Like, <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Chancellor Angela Merkel is my, f- my maybe my favorite Kate McKinnon. Yeah. One of my favorite Kate McKinnon. For a weekend update? Uh, yeah. yeah. Justin Bieber's. Yeah, that's, Justin what, Bieber's. that's why I stopped Pretty myself. Amazing. For a weekend update. Let's, let's narrow yeah, it down. Update. Yeah, weekend update. That's probably the best. <laughs> Sorry. Got a little Kate McKinnon carried away there. Oh, but my issue was Colin during that whole thing. Why? He took away from her. You think? Not like in a good way. I like mean, you said he too was much? too no, he was too much of a wall. He didn't really give too much personality mm. in it. He it was made still you miss Seth reading a the bit. cue card mm. again. It's like you wrote these, didn't you? You should know this lot, your lines. That is something I've noticed. I'm glad you brought that up because I have noticed a lot recently that I am very aware that they're all reading off cue cards. I it used to not be as a parent, yeah. And I don't know if it's they're, they're just trying to do too much, so they don't have the time to memorize things, or I don't know. But not only are you know the the host who are reading off a lot of cue cards, and you mm-hmm. get, it's very apparent because they don't actually they get to train like that kind of skill of doing the live sketches. But the um, the cast members, and I'm just like. Come on, guys. Like, and especially, it really irks me when I see, like, one of the cast members who's maybe in one or two sketches, and they're deliberately reading off the cue cards. Yeah. I'm like, that is your one job for the week. Like, I mean, I Which, know they're writing and stuff. They're doing a lot of things. But, like, come on. If that's the one time you're going to be on camera, like, have your lines memorized. Which I want to pull out. Anna did great in this whole. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she you did. You don't yeah, ever see point. her reading the cue cards. Yeah. No, she did. That's so. a good point. She did a great job. That's why I love this whole... Lu- Louis C.K. Had, a whole. had a cube, was obsessed with his Yeah, we yes. talked about that a lot mm-hmm. last week. He had some cue card issues. Yeah. So that's my issue with the whole weekend update. Uh, Cecily's doing amazing. I think Cecily maybe it's because we have Colin. <laughs> the and joke, so. though, about Biden using Clinique to moisturize his face and John Banner using weather beater death stain. Do you guys... It was like Colin's, like, one of his first jokes. I really... I just really enjoyed that. Okay. 
Okay. okay. That's that's fair. Colin's getting but there, it was just better. This was so much better. When he's reading off the cue update. cards and he's saying the jokes, that's fine. I want him to get better with the interaction the with the yes. guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He because it that. kills it. And Seth did though. so well at it. Seth was so good. Which is why he's hosting Saturday Night Live. Now. I mean, hosting a his late own night. show. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, before we move it's on to the next ass. sketch, um, which is a really fun one, I'm so happy they brought it back. Let's do uh, some iTunes and uh, YouTube shout outs real quick. Uh, guys, thank you so much for rating and commenting on YouTube. We do have some people uh, to shout out. We got Mache. Damn, I probably butchered it again. <laughs> um, he loved it. He was happy with last week. Uh, Steve Southern, uh, he said glad. he's great. To, well, I wish I read these before so I can read it properly. Uh, he's just glad that we enjoyed it as well last week with Louie. And um, sorry, there was a lot more. And he's happy that Baby Boss came back. Uh, with the Kyle sketch, he, he was happy to see uh, the new guys get a little bit more in last week. Um, and there's also Soul Brother, who called Danny Paul. But hey, yep. it was good comments. You could, so. you could pass for Paul. Paul. Paul Revere. The Paul's British very, are coming! Paul's a French... Isn't Paul a French name? Speaking of French... Let's Speaking talk about, let's of talk French... Let's talk about the next sketch. Les Jeunesse de, de Paris. Paris. This is so weird, but so good. This was tied for my favorite sketch of the night. I love it so much. There's so many pop culture references and things throughout, and even like the cup stacking thing with Anna Kendrick. It was... I love this There so you go. Much. You got your one reference. You said they were going to do a bunch of Pitch Perfect references, and... They did cups. And they did. But uh, she, she cried. They didn't need to do any more, and that was good. I know. The best part about the sketch was when... Taryn's arms? What? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, when they had uh, Jay Farrow come in as the guy from The Fifth Element. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the movie The Fifth Element. There were so many good references. And I was there. like, what? I was already being like, what the hell is going on with this sketch? I don't yeah. understand it at all, but it looks like they're having fun. And then all of a sudden, Jay Farrow comes in in that leopard leotard. And I was like, The Fifth Element! Yes. This is awesome and random, and I, I'm okay with it. I so hope they keep doing these, because this is the second one, I believe. Is it second or third? I think it's third, or I think it's more than. Is it more than that? I feel like there I just is, hope yeah. they keep doing. I I love these. Yeah. And and it looked like to me whenever you watch a sketch and they are genuinely like just having a blast on stage, I think that's what's hap like what was happening. Taron Killam was so into every dance mm -hmm. move and everything he did, it made like I couldn't stop smiling. The I was whole, laughing the whole time. The whole group was in sync with each other. And that was, was amazing. Nassim was there. Their yeah. yeah, she was. Their <laughs> dance moves were perfect. I gave it an A. Yeah, I gave it an A too because I was so happy it came back. Uh, Booker T. Washington High School Zoo Field Trip. Student. I definitely thought of you guys while I was watching this because I know Danny loves it and Keaton, you are obsessed with it as well. I love Principal Fry. I think this just needed a little bit more. Yeah, um, this wasn't really, my favorite Principal Fry. Yeah, it wasn't my pr my favorite Principal Fry, but um, it was good. Like you need more Principal Fry or you no, need more less, from the sketch? Less Principal Fry, more from the sketch. More from Anna Kendrick. I don't know, I did, but I didn't like the character they gave her in this one. It, she was it, a little it, subdued. I like, didn't like it. I think the oh. situations are funny, like Iguana and they're called Four Loco and then Shrek was in there. Yeah, and Four Loco. The elephant funny. now called Ashy Larry. Like it was, um, there's some funny things. I think you could have added, um, you could have added some players to make it funny. Like I think you could have added some more people, maybe. I don't know, I thought it was done really well. It was short, sweet, to the point. And Anna did a great job playing her character, that little, like, shy white girl. And uh, Keenan was even good in it as a gym teacher. Yeah. I usually don't like Kenan these was sketches. Keenan was my favorite part. The, the best line was the snap, the, the monkey started a Snapchat <laughs> okay. account with the smartphone. Someone gave the monkey a smartphone, and now it's created a Snapchat account. <laughs> out loud hard at that. I thought that was funny. But, yeah, like I said, I don't really care for these kind of sketches before because I think they're very repetitive. But this time it was something different. Yeah. And I liked it. Right. I really enjoyed it. All right. Yeah. Uh, so then... Pharrell goes on to um, perform again, Marilyn Monroe. Um, and why is Hans Zimmerman there? Hold on. Anytime you can get Hans Zimmer and an orchestra full of women on stage, that pulls in so... That is so much credit to Pharrell. That's unbelievable. That's great, but why? Why? Because he's Pharrell. Why not? Why does he wear the hat? It's his birthday. Because everybody talks about it now. Now LeBron mm -hmm. James wore one after game. Like, you, you, Keenan Thompson wore one. <laughs> he's a trendsetter. 
whatever for like people follow what Pharrell does. He does stuff that's out of the norm and different. And I think Hans Zimmer is is brilliant. Matter of fact, I had to uh, DJ this event this last weekend out of the and country. You called Hans Zimmer. No, and I had to do this. I had to do this pirate thing, and so I was I was actually playing a bunch of Hans Zimmer stuff, like because he did the Pirates of the Caribbean, yep. yeah. all four soundtracks, and I think it was all four, at least three of them. Anyways, but like, I think he's was, brilliant. I thought was this was random. so cool. I mean, it was great, but it was random. Yes. I didn't expect Ra- that. It's random, yeah. but it's just, it's it's different and unique. No, for, Pharrell worked with Hans Zimmer on di- the first Despicable Me, so they actually have that connection oh. together. Oh. So I didn't know that, Marissa, ladies Thank and you, gentlemen. Thank you, Marissa yeah. Booth. the special little. features of Despicable Me. Nuggets nice. of knowledge from Marissa. <laughs> sounds, like it, sounds like your own little show. It does. Nuggets of knowledge with Marissa, sir. <laughs> um. The spoken word thing in the, in the middle was a little weird for me. That's the only reason I didn't give it a, 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 a I gave it a B plus. Actually, you know what? Upping it to an A minus. Only reason it's not an A is because of the spoken word in the middle it was a little weird. Talking about like everybody being special and all these girls on and stage happy are special. And mom. <laughs> yeah. So moving on to the uh, next sketch is Big Joe. Bad. <laughs> really? Weird. Just bad. But it was different. It was bad. It doesn't matter. It was, it was funny. funny. No, it wasn't. No. It wasn't funny. The only thing that was funny at the end when they hand the ring bearer pill and he said, I can't. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that was the only part that was funny That was for the me. only funny part. The rest part. of it, I was like, what are you doing? I was like, that was funny to me because I was like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> no, I will say no, when, it, when, <laughs> when Kyle Mooney picked up a rock and then like skipped across yes. and then the girl picked up the giant, the yeah, biggest well, rock okay. there, I had to laugh there. But the rest of it, like that yeah. part, that switch was funny. But the rest of it just didn't change enough. Yeah, it didn't change pace enough for me. It was oh, a C see, minus. I could re- not relate D to it, but I know so many like muscle dumb. heads that are like, mm, I got this. Ugh. And then it's just so funny to see that kind of character try and pick up a rock to save somebody's life and can't do it. Uh. And then you have all these scrawny people like, oh, I got it. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. You know? It's kind of wah, wah for me. Wah, wah. I don't yeah. know. Well, Anna did great in it, as usual. Just saying, don't forget about her. She is hosting. That. She got a little <laughs> overshadowed in the last couple sketches. Principal yeah. Fry, AD Bryant, this one, like she's got, she's she kind of gotten overshadowed a little bit. I don't think she got overshadowed on I think she did. I don't feel that way. Pharrell had his own sketch. Yeah, I didn't expect that for tryouts. Told you guys Pharrell would be in a sketch. Pharrell can do whatever he wants. This. Yeah. Are we going back to back over here? <laughs> I told you that Pharrell Charlie would have Bagels. a sketch. <laughs> so the twin sisters, but they're not twin. Um, fraternal. Fraternal. <laughs> they uh, sing Take Me or Leave Me from Rent. Again, Anna Kendrick just literally <laughs> picked every song that she's ever wanted to sing on Broadway. And she's she like, did. I'm going to sing it on SNL. Take Me or Leave Me is such a fun song. You know the song karaoke. is about lovers, right? And it's about <laughs> two, yeah, it's about two lesbian lovers. No, it's about sisters. <laughs> uh, I will say something weird about this sketch, though. Uh, besides the hat thing, which seemed like they just added it at the very end just to be funny. Why and not? I didn't, I didn't, yeah, yeah, it was kind of like a why not moment. It wasn't super funny, but it was kind of like, um, I see what you did. I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> I thought that, and I wrote this down, I thought Anna would be significantly better singer than Vanessa. Obviously, she is in real life, but I don't think she was giving like her A game. I agree. I thought I was like Vanessa or Anna. No, Anna. I think Vanessa was obviously singing down, but yeah. I think Anna sang like down to her level as opposed to like blowing her out of the water, yeah. making it an obvious like when they picked Vanessa Bayer, whatever her name was in the sketch, when they picked her to make it obviously like Cammy. Anna wasn't that much better than her in the sketch. Yeah. And I honestly feel like I can see, yeah, I see what you're I saying. I don't understand why. I feel like Vanessa was struggling not singing that song the right way. Like I could like see yeah. it on her mm-hmm. face that like 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 she was trying to like make it sound she was trying really hard to make it sound bad. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure during the entire thing if Vanessa was supposed to be a bad singer because the whole time I'm like, wait, Vanessa can sing. She yeah. knows, she she knows how to sing. She's so Miley that's Cyrus. So the last sketch of the night was that well it wasn't a sketch, it was a video <laughs> short. Uh, NCAA Best of the White Guys. <laughs> My boyfriend was literally, he watched the entire episode just to watch the sketch, and it was at the very end. He's like, of course it'd be at the end. I love that. I played a little <laughs> college basketball, so I, can, I was the d- white guy on a college basketball team. Like, I get, that was funny to me. That was, and they had the white guy, <laughs> they had the white guy doing the nay-nay at the end. Did you see him? The white guy was doing the nay-nay? Is that what you, you learned know, how to do? And you don't know how to do the nay-nay? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> kind of like, I loved that. I thought it was really fun. I gave it a B plus. I didn't okay. think they should end on it. No, it was a it was weird funny. one to end on, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I love, uh, NC double Diving for loose balls. Right. Well, really quickly, because we're running out of time, let's just talk about you. Keaton, you mentioned something about how there was a sketch that was cut out. There was. What? It was, um, it, it was really funny. I saw an article about it on Esquire.com, uh, and um, it's this funny thing about the, do you guys remember the kids show, like, Zoom? It's like, nope. come on and Zoom. Yes. I think it was, yes. So <laughs> they basically made fun of that, and they did, like, actually, it was almost like a, 
behind the music but behind the the tv show and like how like they fed all the kids speed and that's how they got like oh them to to be so high energy and we work such this? long hours you can watch it on um i'm sure you can watch it on uh on the SNL uh, NBC, site. SNL. Yeah, on the NBC website. But it's on Esquire, I, for sure. I saw the article on, SN, on Esquire, yeah. And it was cut out? And it was cut out. Bum. Mm. It er. was cut out. And uh, it was Taryn and Keenan and um, Anna? actually Anna and um, the, uh, Nassim. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So she I wasn't in more. I hope Anna can host next season again. Oh, I they're like going to bring her back, I for really, sure. Especially if they do it like in season with Pitch Perfect 2 coming out, like maybe as like a little oh, promo definitely. for Pitch Perfect I 2. Wish they would, yeah, I wish they would bring her and Rebel yeah. in at the same time. Oh, God. That'd be, like, it would just be so funny. The ratings would be through the yeah. roof. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move into um, some predictions. For next week. Next week is now, Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'm so, well, and the movie that he's um, promoting, Neighbors, yeah. I cannot wait to see. It looks exactly. hilarious. It looks so funny. So Seth Rogen, Ed Sheeran, and uh, this is going to be his third time hosting. He hosted in 07 and 09. And it's, I think it's just going to be him and a bunch of his friends. Yeah. I think it's going to be Absolutely. him and a bunch of his friends. And the writers, this is, I think when people like Seth Rogen come on for SNL, the writers of SNL are kind of like, can take a backseat to his creative brain. So is he like Jonah Hill then? No. So you wouldn't put those two because Jonah Hill, whenever he's been on, Seth Rogen's more of a writer. Okay. You think so? Mm Mm-hmm. You think he's more of a writer than a than a comedian? No, I think he's absolutely than Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I'd agree with that. And Jonah Hill's in this Jonah Hill's in this serious actor phase of his life too, where he. So, I yeah. I really hope because as soon as I found out Ed Sheeran is doing the music, I was like, oh my god, they kind of look alike. <laughs> They're both two gingers <laughs> on SNL, so I hope they maybe have him dress up like Ed so. Sheeran. I'm a big Ed Sheeran fan, though. I'm excited. I for love that. Ed Sheeran. I love He's him. He's a great guy. He's like a real life Ron Weasley that sings beautifully. He's a, yeah, he's so a what's great guy. what's one sketch you guys would want to come out of this for next week with Seth Rogen? Uh. <laughs> Something maybe like this is the end, some parody of like this is the end, like something would have to do with that. I would enjoy seeing. I want to see a Game of Thrones sketch. Okay. I want Drunk Uncle and Zac Efron. <clears throat> Just saying. That'd be fun. Oh, I, I really want Zac Efron. <laughs> Give us Zac Efron. <laughs> and then uh, I forgot to, we overall grade of Anna's episode would be... It, this is not, and I'm not grading this because of Anna, I'm grading because of the sketches they put her in because she was fantastic, but I would say a B minus. Okay. I would, Maybe a C plus. I would say uh, B. A for awesome and Anna. <laughs> B for boner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to rate us and comment on iTunes, five stars. And also, don't forget to download the uh, new app for Android and iPhone for yes. AfterBuzz TV. Woo! Where you can watch all of our favorite TV Hello. after shows. Get so, it. Danny and Keaton, where can we find you, lovely people? Well, next week you can find me in New York. But oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at KeatonM33. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and the World Wide Web at Danny Hoyt, which is just my name. Like, like it stills right below me. <laughs> Perfect. And guys, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Hey Roy. That's H E Y R O Y A. Thanks again, guys. Thank you, guys. Woo! See you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Bye. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.